Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. I'm Paula Jordan, your other representative, next to Ms. Caroline Troy and our new Senator Foreman. And first of all, I want to thank everybody because I, I found it really difficult to park this time, so thank you for that. I walked three blocks away. <laughs> I thought, well, fabulous, we have a great turnout. So I'm actually very excited to be here. I've been on the go since the session ended, and I, I do recommend that we try to have these fall, as a follow-up immediately after the session adjourns, uh, primarily because then it's fresh in our minds and fresh in your mind as to what's going on because there really is a whole set of agendas, and it's too much to cover today within a few minutes. But uh, for those of you who have been either fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you like my new newsletters, they're weekly. And I do have uh, oftentimes daily updates, but on the weekly newsletters, you'll see exactly how I voted. I divulge pretty much the, uh, the, the content of the bill, uh, it's in, uh, excuse me, it's the intent of the bill as well, and how I voted uh, on the bill. So uh, those are very helpful. I found that uh, people who responded to those newsletters appreciated them just simply because uh, they weren't quite aware uh, what was going on and what that meant and how it impacted them. So if I can provide more clarity in that regard, please let me know. But so far it's been working, and I appreciate that because I had a good team uh, with my uh, legislative assistant who I hired simply just to help me out because we are not very fortunate to have a staff. Uh, we don't have that in our budget. So uh, hiring my own assistant was really helpful this go around, and I knew it was going to be a heavy lift uh, given the election turnout. So. Uh, we've had multiple town halls uh, all up and down the state, which is uh, very fortunate for uh, me because I'm also learning about other districts uh, beyond ours. And pretty much, it's we're all in the same boat. We're all being impacted in one way or another in the same way, uh, whether you're uh, on the other side of the aisle, rural, in the city, didn't matter. Everyone is all uh, in the same situation. So from here, uh, I have Bill Spencer, so I better watch what I say. <laughs> but I, I will let everyone know that uh, I hope you do sign up for these newsletters. I will have one more follow-up because there's so much content. I try not to overburden you with all the information that we get. And we do have actually a nice booklet that our legislative session sends us uh, at the end. So upon adjournment, it's a nice booklet just to tell you on what the bills are, what was passed, uh, even some of the uh, budget items, uh, rules. We have a lot of rulemaking processes that take place at the beginning of session that some people are still learning about. And uh, at the beginning of my second term now, I've learned a lot about that process because we still govern through those rules, uh, which is a, a unique perspective for us as legislators to have because we're kind of double governing that way because it's a way for us to kind of have our head in two pots, which I uh, voted against when we had that on our uh, constitutional amendment. Uh, during the last election, uh, primarily because I felt that, well, you know, we make the, uh, the, the laws and we send these bills forward, and once they're approved by the legislative, uh, legislative body, they go to the administrative programs, and that each administrative program has an entire department of professionals. Well, while they're trying to make changes to impact our state in a greater way, those rules still come back to us for approval, and then we get to interject again our ideologies and political viewpoints on those administrative programs. So that's what happens at the beginning of session. A lot of our time is spent in doing that. Uh, and I try to make it clear for people to understand what that means because we have impacted educational rules. Uh, we've stricken out climate change, biodiversity, human impact, uh, all these major functions of science that I think matter in school systems. Um, and while I was raised in the private school system and my kids are private school educated, I still believe that in the public school systems, this is what we're doing wrong. We are striking out governance, uh, morality, ethics, uh, science, uh, and all these things to me are very critical to every young child's upbringing. So uh, rather than striking up all these opportunities, I feel that we need to be responsible uh, and fund them appropriately, but also support uh, those certain rules because teachers do need us in that regard. Um, I was told, well, while we're going to strike these rules, teachers still have the ability to uh, interject and apply that in their curriculum. <coughs> well, that's not entirely the case. So we do have another shot at this next year. It'll come back around and hopefully we'll have uh, legislators who will see maybe the difference or have a change of heart. Uh, in the meantime, I'm uh, letting people 
know what's going on, just to be aware because your voice does matter and it really truly does make a difference when you are speaking to legislators not only here but outside of your district so that they understand uh, where you're coming from. I've had, uh, and we're very fortunate here in this district because we have the University of Idaho. The University of Idaho is very much a strong resource, not just economically, but uh, socially and of course with academics. They are often asked to come down uh, through our professorships, uh, students or uh, some professionals who are through different programs at the U of I to testify. So there's a nice plethora of expertise there that we can benefit from. So it's, it's really a it's nice perspective for us to, uh, from District 5 to have U of I uh, to come down and really chime in on these particular bills because, you know, for me, it, it can't just be me all the time. I tell people it's hard when you're the only voice you know, trying to fight for good or for your perspective that you believe is right. You know, I've often been asked uh, both internationally and nationally to speak on leadership development, economy, everything across the board. And they'll say, you know, you're often the lone voice in the room. Yet, you're able to come out of that uh, and be successful. How do you do it? And honestly, I says, well, you know, it's not just me. I think you see me because I'm always at the forefront, but you, honestly, there's other people. And those people are those who I represent in the district. It's my constituent base that I'm very, very much privileged to represent. And so I really give all that credit to many of you because we have worked with other forms of our industry, people in our community, and they've risen up to help defeat some pretty horrible bills. And I'll, I say that with utmost kindness because they are uh, more devastating to our economy and to, I would say, the respect of our communities that we've been trying to build through these generations over the years. And uh, so the, it's frustrating, uh, by and large, uh, primarily because it's always politics being driven into our lives. And as someone who's very independent, I don't like politics being driven into my life. Uh, but I'm trying to do my best to hold our ground uh, to allow you to be protected. Protecting your property rights, your, your value system, ensuring that you have opportunities and that you will not uh, believe really what goes on. I, I can strip through this book and tell you that a good majority uh, has not been good. A lot of the bills that have been presented are very challenging. Uh, I, you know, like I said, we don't have a whole lot of time, but I, I thought about writing down every single bill that was horrible and why it's horrible and what we can do about it. And I thought, I'm going to save that for another newsletter. In the meantime, I'm not going to turn this into a event session, but simply I want this to be as productive as possible so again, I'm going to go back around to please sign up for my newsletter. And uh, many of you know me, so you can call me. Uh, a lot of you folks have, you know, I, I've been blessed. And I have Commissioner uh, Tom here, who just, I, I, I don't know I call him Commissioner still, I just love him so much. But Tom is really uh, one of those in our community who just calls me up on the phone or texts me when he's in town. I love that because it's so isolating in Boise. And whether you're you know, in office or not, it's just one of those places, especially when you're from northern Idaho. Uh, and I'm pretty country, so it's just uh, it's nice to have people from home come down and see us, and we have lunch or breakfast or dinner, uh, and just talk about the issues because we have to be reminded of what matters most, which is home. So uh, that being said, I know we are super short on time, uh, but I, I really do encourage all of you to maybe uh, if you have time, you want to stay uh, closer connected. I am always open to sharing my cell phone number, and please don't be shy because honestly, I've had folks from. Uh, Deary or Troy Potlatch obtained my cell phone number and there have been bills that have come out early in the morning, kind of at random, and they'll say, oh gosh, you know, please don't vote for that, or they'll say why I'm in uh, the police force, I've been here for 25 years, and this is why this would negatively impact me, please research this heavily. And I actually found out that I was the strongest gun proponent in my state affairs committee. That was shocking to me. <laughs> While I'm a gun owner, I kept thinking, well, you know, there are other people who are, you know, pushed to constitutional carry, they've done this and that, and yet I was the one who was constantly defending gun rights in that committee. Uh, and it was only because there were certain bills that come up, and while I'm a Democrat, I don't have the privilege of seeing these bills until they hit my desk and we have to vote on it within the next five minutes. Uh, it's be, and that's kind of part of the challenge of being in the minority, because you don't have, again, that privilege to see these bills up front, to speak with the bill sponsor, to do your research, talk with your constituents, or really get the lay of the land on that particular matter. Uh, so I'm really relying on people in our district, or those who I trust, like all of you, to 
help me out when it comes to the history of these bills or the history of uh, certain legislation that go far back beyond, even the farther back than that bill sponsor notes. So we have to keep these things straight, but it comes down to working together, and that really is my message today, is, is simply that we are family, we're neighbors, and whether you're frustrated by this session or not, the fact that you're here says a lot, it means that you want to stay engaged, and uh, my branch is me too. So stay engaged, and this is how I want to help. Thank you.